If a little green is good, more is even better. Now, back to Green is Good with John Shigarian and Mike Brady. Welcome back to Green is Good, and we're so excited and honored today to have our friend Paige Donner on the phone with us. Paige is on the phone from somewhere in Europe. We're not going to say where today. And Paige is a journalist, filmmaker, humanitarian, and the founder of Greening Hollywood. Paige, it is an honor and privilege to have you on today. You are one of the green rock stars who's leading the green revolution. Welcome to Green is Good, Paige Donner. Well, John, I'm just delighted to be here with you on the radio waves with you and Mike. Thank you so much for inviting me on. You know, this sounds so cool because what a great way to start a show somewhere in the European (laughs) Union. That sounds so (laughs) mysterious. So, I mean, I just can't wait. This is going to be a lot of fun. (laughs) Anyway, (laughs) Paige, you know, really, you really do. so. you, You wear so many hats. Like I said, journalist, filmmaker, humanitarian. And you really are green, you know, through and through in your DNA. You love what you're doing. Tell us a little bit about what's going on in the Green Revolution, how you got started, how you got, uh, you know, you were raised in California and Hawaii, close to the ocean, but what made you so interested in being one of the green leaders right now? Well, um, yeah, well, that's a, that's, a, that's a great question, John, really to the point. Um, you know, I think it just, it, it, you know, I have, I have to say um, technology, I think, sort of, in a way, paved the way because as a journalist, um, when I started off in the early '90s, I wanted to tell the story of of environmental issues and stories and, and trends. And yet, um, without the openness of media, it was a little bit hard. You sort of had to wait for an editor to give you the go ahead or assign you the story. So when the floodgates of the um, you know of the internet o- opened up, it kind of gave us journalists. Um, a much and filmmakers a much um, you know wider opportunity to tell the stories that 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 we wanted to tell without having to necessarily wait for an editor to to give us the the okay and um, and that so that kind of led the way for me to sort of just jump on my own bad wagon and say well these are some stories that that ought to be told. Well, which which hat do you enjoy wearing most? Are you wearing them all at the same time in terms of humanitarian filmmaker, eco journalist? I mean, what 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 you know? I you do so much, and I know you travel extensively. Where is you know where are you right now? And 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 how does media you know play an important role in environmental issues with regards to what you're doing? Well, um, yeah, I think I think it's just kind of the nature of the times where where we're wearing a lot of hats, like any you know anybody as a journalist. Or, or in the media has had to kind of um, evolve, you know, along sure. with, with how the industry is, is evolving, which means that we wear, you know, di- you know different hats. Um, I think humanitarianism is just sort of something that, that y- you know, you, you are. Like, y- that's just part of the choices that you make on a daily basis, whether you're telling a, a story or making a film or raising kids, you know, sure. um, or just interacting with, you know, with, with people, um, but I would um, I, I think that media really plays a point uh, a big part still in the fact that um, without proper and factual representation of really what's going on, we all get so easily confused. Yeah. And so I think that that in that sense, you know, media still plays an extremely important role in terms of informing and presenting. Um, you know, what the heck's going on with climate change and the environment and water and things of that nature. So Inconvenient Truth and Wally and all these great movies that have come out in recent years have truly moved the needle tremendously you're saying and is really moving us towards a better future. Yeah, I would I would be I'm completely in sync with with that, Don. Yeah, I I completely agree with um with that with that statement. Um you know, and and you know, and again, it, it kind of um, it makes it also. I think it, it it gives a little bit of a fun element, at least in terms of of, of prop, media properties such as um, as Wally, and and something like Inconvenient Truth. You know, just fires everybody up and makes people have to pay. Uh, you know, have to pay attention. So um, you know, which, you know, which, which is wonderful because there's all too many things that 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 divide and 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 vie for our attention on a daily basis as we all kind of muddle our way through 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 our life, right? Um, and the daily happenings of of the world around us. So um, so yeah, yeah, media media is a big role, I think, in all this. 
Well, you know, in case you just joined us, uh, we're on the air right now on Green is Good with Paige Donner, an L.A.-based journalist. She's a writer, also a filmmaker. And Paige, you know, when we talk about uh, such issues as environment, we're, we're, we're talking about the entire planet. Now, you lived and traveled in countries like Pakistan and Afghanistan and Japan, and you've been in Guam as a young adult and France and Germany, so you really do have a worldwide global perspective on something that does affect us all. Uh, has that helped shape your view? Yeah, Mike, it, I, I, yes, it really, it really has. Um, it, it shows us that we are, um, we're all tied together on this planet. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like sure. there are more similarities than, than differences. Um, and then it also does show that there are certain pockets of the world that are going to um, come out of this, I think, a lot more easily than, you know, that you know than other areas. I mean, there's you know there's atolls in the Pacific Ocean, um, well, geographically very far from from Guam, for example, but they're they're in the Pacific Ocean. That you know, with climate change and and. And what's happening? They might not exist in the next decade. They'll just they'll be over. They'll be swallowed up by by the ocean. So there's you know, and where are those people going to go? They're going to lose their island nations. So things like that certainly yes, it it, it does give you a different perspective on 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 matters. You know, Paige. We you know I know that you have uh, friends in high places, and I know you've met President Bill Clinton and many many other brilliant leaders of the world. I mean, and we just finished the Clinton Global Initiative last week, and, and, and President Clinton was really talking green a lot. I mean, explain to our listeners how individuals, great individuals, and all of us can make a difference in the green revolution, because you've traveled extensively, as Mike points out, but met a lot of amazing people. Well, how, how, do, how do we all join in and become part of the solution and not just say, I can't make a difference? How can individuals make a difference according to what you know and what you've seen. Yeah, no, that's I. You know, I think that that's that really drives to the heart of the of the matter there, John. Because um, I think a lot of us maybe when we look at at those big plastic, you know, again to use another ocean reference, but those big plastic islands of of trash that you know are floating out in the middle of the of the ocean. You know, we look at that and we go, well, how how can we not using a plastic bag when they go to the grocery store, you know, it may make a difference. But as a matter of fact, you know, in California alone, there's, what, like 30-plus million of us. So if each of us just didn't, you know, use a, a, a plastic bag when we went to the grocery store, you know, every day or every other day, that's, you know, that's millions. We're yeah. talking millions less of plastic bags used on a daily basis. Right. So, yeah, I mean, you know, very much so. Just people's people's uh, singular actions. Uh, it's it's the it's the collectivity of it. It definitely makes a, a huge difference. So your huge me difference. so your message to our listeners that every one of them who are listening to you right now can become part of the solution and become leaders in their own way of the green revolution. Yes. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, and I and I really think it's very important that we maintain um, a, the the positive outlook of the, you know, of the glass is, is half full rather than half empty. So it's not that it's you know it's not that you have to be perfectly green. You sure. know, I mean it's like the, you know we're all gonna the, we're all gonna have things that we do. You know, maybe some of us don't want to be vegetarians, or maybe some of us have to take an airplane, or or you know whatever whatever it is none of us are going to be perfectly eco but that doesn't mean that that we can't that we can't strive and that we can't you know do you know do our best i think that's so a part where the green movement gets a little bit um tough for people because i think they end up becoming um self-critical when when we should be self-praising for the things that that we do even if it's not perfect yet you know as long as we're going in the right direction you make such a great point. Again, in case you just joined us now, we're talking to Paige Donner, who is an artist, an author, an, an ecopreneur. And Paige, you are so right. John and I have so often stressed in the, on the Green is Good show that every human being just doing one small thing. I mean, there's so much power in numbers. We don't have to be perfect. We don't need to be guilted into doing something. What we do need to do is just be a little more conscious in our day-to-day -day living. We're going to make decisions. Sometimes we can we can do a lot. Sometimes, like you said, if you have to travel by airplane, 
Yeah, okay, but you think about it. Is there another option? If there's not, you take the airplane, you do something a little bit different. Maybe it's uh, taking a shopping bag, a reusable shopping bag, when you just go down the corner to the store to get a quart of milk. And maybe it's, you know, instead of driving a quarter of a mile to get that milk, I'll take my bike or take a, a walk. It's a nice day. Simple things like that. And you, you are so right, Paige. You know, uh, yeah. for our listeners out there, Paige can also, just so you could go to her website, it's uh, it's it's ecoconsulting, ecomedia.yola site, Y-O-L-A-S-I-T-E dot com. And that will be up on the website after the show airs. But uh, Paige is also an environmental consultant. And Paige, what are some of the other industries as you travel that you see where green change is occurring what are you what are you seeing as some of the future industries so for a lot of our young people listening want to know how to how to become the next greenpreneur out there what do you see out there yeah i you know i think that that's a really exciting topic john um you know there is a lot of talk of the of the new green economy um and and i think that it's you know it, it's evolving it's 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 maybe not in full bloom quite yet, but it's definitely on on the horizon. You know, two things come to mind to, to answer that that question. One topic, aviation, is what we were just sort of touching on a little bit about. Mm. You know, having to take a a, a jet plane or, or not. And they they just um, had a, a conference. Um, it just wrapped up in Switzerland, uh, a aviation conference where a lot of the focus actually was on. Um, biofuels for for jet planes. So that's that's a new and very growing um, area. One I don't personally know all that much about. I know in California, actually in Southern California, there are um, some companies who are uh, really focusing on that, as well as as the Air Force is actually trying to um, um, start purchasing more biofuels for 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 the jets. Um, so that's like one area that that I could stand to learn a lot more about, and I think that would be a really exciting maybe area of, of development and technology for for kids that are kind of just coming up and out into the workforce. Got it. Uh, and one area that I um, or I, I have focused out a lot on is entertainment, coming from Los Angeles uh, in terms of movie productions and movie studios. And how um, those industries can be a little, you know, well, actually much less wasteful because it is actually right. a very wasteful industry, and 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 actually the receptivity of the people at the studios these days to doing that and the production people, um, basically wherever you look or wherever you can throw a stone, you can you can kind of be a little, you can be a little more green or a little more eco, you know. You're so right. I mean, it's, I, and I want to talk about Hollywood for one more second. We had a wonderful guest uh, a couple months back, Eva Radke, and she runs Film Bills Recycling out of New York, where she takes old sets from all the shows that are being uh, filmed in New York, and she recycles them and sells the stuff and, and donates the proceeds and keeps her store open. And I mean, it's just a small little idea like that, and it's become a big business. Yeah, that. Yeah, that's fabulous. You know, the, and even the the producers guild um, got on board with that. They uh, they banded together. They talked about it and consulted with the various studios for oh, I don't know, good a good little while. And then they put up their um, their green site. So the producers producersguild dot org slash green has a great resource site online um, in terms of. Like I'm sure, I'm sure she's listed on there as well as like green caterer or organic caterers and people using you know like yeah, organic cotton for for costume wow. um, design. Yeah, so yeah. And let's yeah. talk about that a little bit. You already have a brand called Greening Hollywood that you're the founder of. Talk a little bit about Greening Hollywood, how and why you started it, and what it is, and what you're accomplishing with it. Oh yeah. Well, you know, it's it's funny. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd love to. Well, thanks for the opportunity. Um, you know, I came. I, uh, one of my first gigs as a journalist was for um, Variety, which is a very industry film and television journal. It's you know, it's it usually kind of reports a lot on box office and and who you know who who's the studio head today and that kind of thing. So, um, it, so when I was able to fuse my passion of environmentalism to to the kind the form of journalism I had done most in in my life, it was kind of an it was just an organic development. It's like you know, well, okay, I'm reporting on movies anyway. Let's report about how you know what what what's green about about the movies. Right. And then what I quickly found out is that doing that kind of reporting in Los Angeles, 
it ends up touching on so many areas. I, I often kid the people, it's like when your governor is a former movie star, basically everything is green in Hollywood, you know? Right. right. So I don't mean to be tongue-in-cheek, but in a right. way it kind of started started to, to be like that. So, um, you know, so uh, like, for example, there's a... Um, there's a a brand, a big brand thing just being launched this week with Louis Vuitton and Bono's wife, who's a costume, who's a a, a clothing designer, Ali, um, with her brand Eden, and they've banded together that so that all the proceeds from the new Louis Vuitton bag that she designed is going to be going towards um, uh, it, it retails for forty nine hundred dollars, and all the proceeds for that is going to be going towards um, sustainably farmed organic cotton in Africa. Wow. So, like, that's a greening Hollywood story, sure, you know? Sure, sure, and you get And you get to cover a lot of these stories. Is Hollywood becoming greener from what you see? And what's the next I- evolving iteration of what's happening in Hollywood with the greening of Hollywood? What What's on the horizon that you're seeing more of? Um, in terms of, like, in terms of the, the industry it, itself, is that... Or what even like the stars, are more alleys going to be getting involved? Are, are there more stars that are going to be stepping out and saying recycle more or, or use more organic cotton? Are the stars themselves uh, really enjoying and, and see this as an opportunity for them to brand themselves not only as a star but also to give them a social side to their image? Yeah, well, you know, um, you know, actually, that that is a, a really good good question because what I see, John, is kind of um, I kind of see more of a subtlety, uh, more of a subtlety taking place. I think in in the decades past, people, um, if they wanted to be environmentally friendly, they almost became I don't want to say pigeonholed, but they almost became that. That was then their thing, and then they were a celebrity. Whereas now, I think it's become much more, much more subtle. It's like, yeah, well, of course, you know, I drive an electric vehicle. Why, you know, why wouldn't I? It, but it doesn't mean that, you know, they're going to be like, for example, if if it's a Leonardo DiCaprio or if it's a Brad Pitt, you know, they're going to do that. But they're not going to become. That, that doesn't mean that they're going to be. Only the eco celebrity. They're still going to be Leo, or they're still going to be, you know, you know, Brad, Brad Pitt. Right. So what I'm finding is that environmentally friendly choices have taken on a level of subtlety, which I think is great in the sense that it's subtlety in the sense of yeah, it's normal. Of course, why wouldn't you choose that? You know. Right, right, right. You're also the founder of the Green Blog Network, and I don't want to leave anything undone today. Explain to our <laughs> listeners a little bit about what the Green Blog Network is and why that's so important in terms of disseminating important and relevant information. Well, um, well, yeah. Again, thank, thanks for that question. Well, I, 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 I try to do kind of quote unquote more more serious. Um, we kind of try to do a little bit more more serious things. Like like right now, there's you know the AB32 in California is is coming up, and people are worried um, that it might be you know o- overturned. And that's such a landmark piece of legislation. And you know a couple of oil companies out of Texas are putting ton you know a lot of money behind. It. So so we try to use the Green Blog Network as a little bit of a as a platform to kind of really illustrate you know quote-unquote, more kind of some more serious issues. But it, it also came up, it just, again, it was organic. I got the opportunity last, earlier this year, last winter, to um, report at the Olympics, the, the uh, Vancouver Olympics, and uh, which was like a, an opportunity of a lifetime. You know, it's like one of those things, wow, I got lucky. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Lord above. You know what I mean? Um, and so, you know, again, it was just kind of one of, I realized there's all these pockets of, of things happening in different parts of the world, you know, Vancouver, Los Angeles, San Francisco, um, you know, Paris, Geneva, Madrid, you know, uh, London, you know, that if we can all, um, if we can all kind of like time our voices in, then we'll be quite a chorus quite quickly. So that's the whole that's the whole philosophy behind Green Blog Network is just giving anybody who wants to say something eco-friendly a platform 
to, to say it on, as long as they can spell check. <laughs> gotcha. gotcha. <laughs> That's a, you need to put that feature in there. Okay. <laughs> hey, and so t- talk a little bit about, uh, you know, and, and so your, your position is it's important for listeners to vote a certain way on, on Prop 23 and, and AB 32, you're saying. You have a strong opinion and you get to use the Green Blog Network to help people get to voice their opinion on that. Well, yeah, you know, I guess, I guess, I guess, I guess, yeah, my political leaning does come out on, sure. on that, on, okay. on that issue, um, you know, as a, as a, as a pretty strong in, in, environmentalist, but it's, um, but, but no, I mean, if somebody had a different opinion, we'd be happy to, to put it up there, you know, sure. um, and then pe- readers can choose for, for themselves. I'm, yeah, I'm not, a, I'm more about just informing, right. um, I really believe in, in, and providing information and letting people think for themselves and make their own decisions, most cool. definitely. Cool. You know, one of the bigger decisions that this country's faced with our president and the administration is this whole issue of climate change. And what, I mean, where are we now, Paige? You know, we hear so much, you know, uh, after inconvenient truth and, and what we're just living through in just terms of how the climate feels warmer. Where are we in terms of turning the back uh, and, and getting and getting things going with regards to climate change. Is the president going to make a move on this? Is the administration going to make a move? And what can our listeners do to be part of the solution with regards to climate change? Wow, is, is, was that a question for me, or was that was that's that a you. question for me? <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, that's yeah, we time. we need we, well we you know, we're, we're 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 on a time limit, but you know what's your feelings on that page? I mean, are you hopeful hopeful on climate change? That's really what I want to know. And if so, how can more of our listeners get engaged in the process so they don't feel like they're on the outside being told what they have to do. Yeah. Yeah, I know what you mean. Um, you know, I I think I have to say that, you know, there's been this sort of upwelling of regional regionalism, if you will. Okay. Um, you know, so I and I think that that's a very I think it's a very healthy development. I mean, um, like for example, the Western Climate Initiative. You see partnerships, friendships, actually friendships being formed between the leaders of, for example, British Columbia and California and Oregon and, and Washington. And because there's these friendships amongst these leaders, they can sit down at the table and they can talk and they can sort of kind of come to a solution that that's workable for them, and then they can. Do what's necessary to, to implement it. So you know that's kind of almost like a midway level between the individual's action and something that would be a centralized or, and federal action. You, you know, but I, I I see that as a, as a healthy development, um, and and I think that that it's that it's very doable. You know, uh, again, I really do believe it. Just it it, it really comes down to people's individual individual choices. Um, and it's not all about consumption, you know. It's also about about lifestyle, about less is more, um, kind of a thing, um, and and learning, uh, you know, how to appreciate what it is we, you know, we've got, and yeah. you know, yeah. So I don't know. I hopefully I kind of tackled that question a little bit. No, you Maybe did. We're it. down to the last <laughs> thirty or forty seconds here, Paige. Leave, leave our listeners with some pearls or wisdoms from, from, you know, and all you already have, and your, and your points are all amazing with regards to this. This is a process. It's not about perfection and that we all can do something. Anything else you want to share with our listeners as we get ready to sign off? Well, yeah, you know, I would say I think one of the best things we can do is just actually get out into nature ourselves, you know, because... Uh, so many of us are, are are stuck behind a computer for for you know all day long or in a car or and you know honestly just getting outside and smelling the fresh air going for a walk along the beach or in the forest or hike in the mountains and, and looking at just really looking at the beauty of nature I think is one of the best things we can do for the for the environment because it reminds us of what we love you know it's 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 our planet is such a lovable beautiful thing you know why it's like why why wouldn't we take absolute 
we the best care of it that we can. Paige, you know? Paige, that's so well said and so well done today. Mike and I are just so thankful for your time. I, we know you're traveling somewhere in Europe, and we're not allowed to say where. But just to call in from Europe is such an honor for us, and to have you share some of your real great thoughts on what you've seen and what you're doing right now is so important for our listeners. For our listeners out there that want to connect with Paige, it's Eco Consulting Eco Media dot Yola with an A, yolasite.com. She is the founder of Greening Hollywood, the Green Blog Network, a journalist and a filmmaker. Paige Donner, you are truly an inspirational green evangelist and a green rock star in our book and living proof that green is good. This program will be available for downloading in a couple of days from our station's website, Keyword Podcast. Thanks for listening and join us again next week at the same time for another edition of Green is Good.